Hello, everyone. How are you? Fine. Fine. Sai Kalyan and Sanjay, only two of you are there. Sanjay, what is it that, oh, more have come. Good. Sanjay, what is it that you are doing in school? Sanjay? No, we have not started the school, ma'am. What is it I can't hear? We have not started school, ma'am. Really. Not started school, okay. And uh, Hari Haran, what are you doing in school? Is your school reopened? Uh, on, online classes, ma'am. Online classes. So what are you doing now? Uh, now, uh, last online class from 12th onwards, uh, offline. Okay. okay. What subject, uh, what topic are you doing in chemistry? Uh, alcohol, finance and ethos now in ethos, ma'am, actually. Oh, you have reached ethos. Very good. And Sai Kalyan, what about you? Ma'am, today was the last day of online class. From Monday onwards, uh, school will open. Okay, so what did you learn in school chemistry? Um, currently, we is taking solutions. Miss finished the uh, alcohol phenols and ethos. Oh, she already finished. So it is good then. It is a revision for you. <clears throat> and... Uh, Okay, some people are coming and going. Just now I saw five, but one more has disappeared. So after doing alkyl halides and haloalkanes, alcohols is not difficult at all. It is very easy, just like <clears throat> alkyl halides only. We'll wait for one or two more minutes and then we will start the class. Hari Raghav also had joined, I think. I don't know what happened. <clears throat> Okay, now let us start. Since others are not coming, we'll talk some general things about alcohols. So when I say the word alcohol, what is the first thing comes to your mind? Hmm? The general term alcohol. It is a functional group, ma'am. Yeah, it is. it has a compound which has a functional group. What is a functional group present? OH, ma'am. OH. They are compounds which contain OH group. And what do you call this OH group? Hydroxyl group. Okay, it is known as hydroxyl group. Now, when we say alcohol alone, the first thing that comes to your mind should be, which we, the alcohol that we, you know, uh, come across very often in everyday life is the one which is shown in this picture, the different types of alcohols available in the market. They are which alcohol? Do you have any idea? You know, ethanol, ma'am. Ethanol. All of them contain ethanol. Okay, so all the alcohols that are used as, you know, in English, you call them liquors. Different types of liquors, they are actually the same thing, and that is ethanol. So, whether you uh, take uh, whiskey or you take wine or you take vodka, whatever you take, everything will contain only ethanol. Only thing different is the percentage of ethanol will be different in all of them. And also the, uh, the, so the, they will taste different because the source or the starting compound from which you started making the alcohol will be different. So you can make alcohol from grapes, then you call it wine, you can make alcohol from, you know, wheat, germinated wheat, then you make, uh, you know, normally that is whiskey, you can make alcohol from, uh, you know, potatoes, that is known as vodka. So different types of starting compounds will give different flavors, but the alcohol pres present in all of them is ethanol. Now, other 
this ethanol is never concentrated. The ethanol that is present in all these alcohols will be all, will be around only 40 to 45 percent. Okay, who else has come now? Vaishnavi has come. Okay, so now uh, what we need to understand is this is only the way government earns excise duty because that is the way people, you know, it is highly taxed commodity and people earn excise duty. It should be actually something which should be banned that way. But ethanol is a very useful compound industrially. It is very useful in the industry and it is used in the large scale in industry. And other than that, nowadays, ethanol is a very important biofuel. Now, in times where pet we know petroleum uh, sources are drying up in the whole world, and there may be times where, where we may not get any petrol, people are looking at alternates of petrol, and many countries, they have started using ethanol as a biofuel, as a fuel which is other than petrol, and it causes lesser pollution also. It gives burning of ethanol also gives uh, sufficient amount of energy, and so many times it is used as biofuel. Another alcohol, which is which you can see in the picture here, it is known as rubbing alcohol, and this alcohol became very popular during the days of COVID. During COVID days, the the uh, alcohol that we were using as you know hand sanitizers hand sanitizers so everything we were spraying with a san sanitizer you had you know um, uh, savalon san sanitizer that all sanitizer so most of the sanitizer hand sanitizers and especially when you go to hospitals you must have seen doctors they always uh, wipe their hands uh, with a with a lotion that is actually isopropyl alcohol isopropyl alcohol so the alcohol isopropyl alcohol is known as the rubbing alcohol that is also a very common and popular alcohol okay so very useful um, alcohol which saved literally many lives i should say during covid because we have we were always sanitizing spraying it on the doors door handles anything which is touching um, anybody else touched we were using this isopropyl alcohol alcohol based hand sanitizer then you have uh, all of you are familiar with this picture what is this this is vix when you have uh, you Mental know uh, yeah so the the thing that we use here that is menthol okay it contains the alcohol type of alcohol all all alcohols will end in all and that is menthol you know cholesterol every time when you know people have high blood pressure people with, of my age you always keep testing your blood for cholesterol cholesterol is actually there are different types of cholesterol hdl and ldl you must have heard of them and uh, ldl is a good cholesterol and hdl is so the two types there is some good cholesterol and some not good cholesterol so the cholesterol which is good is hdl the one which is not so good is ldl no reverse i am saying the hdl is not supposed to be good ldl is supposed to be good so that also contains this is the structure and this also contains the oh group and that is present in alcohols there's another alcohol which is called ethylene glycol which is used as car antifreeze in the chapter of solutions we came across this ethylene glycol this car antifreeze how does it uh, act as car antifreeze it lowers the uh, freezing point of um, of the it causes lowering of freezing point so it lowers the freezing point of water and that is why in countries where uh, where the temperature goes below 0 degree celsius then in their cars they cannot use water for you know in the front of the car there is a you know the what do you call that the thing in which water circulates to keep the engine cool what do you call that part of the car i don't remember the name 
so that is uh, always filled with water so water why do we have water because water keeps circulating and that is that uh, yeah. prevents the overheating of engine but in case of countries which are where the temperature is below 0 degrees celsius you can't use water so you use ethylene glycol which is also an alcohol and uh, that one is known as uh, prestone that is a brand which which is uh, used as anti freeze so that is also an alcohol so we have different hundreds of alcohols that we use in everyday life one more with for which i didn't uh, get a picture for you but i would like to mention the name of that and that is called glycerol i don't know whether you have heard of this glycerol okay so glycerol is also a very important alcohol it is propane 1 2 3 triol okay so glycerol also is a very useful compound that we come across in everyday life any idea glycerin ma'am what ha uh, glycerin glycerol is same as glycerin so glycerin is used uh, uh, in many medical purposes so but uh, it is used it is used for making soap and if you do glycer uh, you know um, you do nitration of glycerol you will get nitroglycerin okay have you heard of nitroglycerin nitroglycerin is a compound which is used for making dynamite try nitroglycerin it is made used for making dynamite which is an explosive so glycerol is used for making dynamite it is adsorbed on the surface of a porous substance and that makes dynamite and the same nitroglycerin also is used for medication for people who are you know suddenly somebody gets a heart attack they'll give a small tablet to put under the tongue that also is made from glycerol so glycerol is a very useful compound more than anything else for you know young people like you you should know glycerol is very very sweet and it is used instead of using sugar syrup sometimes glycerol is used for making chocolates so the sweetness in chocolates chocolates is because of glycerol so toffees and chocolates they are of always made of uh, they contain the sweetening agent there is glycerol so the most alcohols that you know they are all very very uh, important compounds and they are used we come across them in everyday life many times you know the sugar that we use also contains a oh group so that is a carbohydrate but carbohydrates contain hydroxyl group five oh groups are present in glucose so that is how this compound this uh, chapter is a useful important chapter and of course you know this uh, compound which we will learn those who are already learning they know what is this compound this is also ending in all phenol right yeah where do we use phenol the white lotion that is used for mopping the floors that is phenol isn't it phenyl we call it but it is actually phenol so the white lotion um, is this is a very good disinfectant so that also is used so very useful compound so many color dyes they are obtained from alcohols so these are very important class of compounds okay so now today we will start with the classification of alcohols so just like classification of alcohols is exactly like the classification of uh, haloalkanes and uh, haloarenes okay so let us see so first step of classification is based on number of based on number of oh groups you said all alcohols will contain hydroxyl groups so it depends on the number of oh groups so based on number of oh groups just like haloalkanes they can be monohydric monohydric that means they contain one oh group right and then they can be dihydric and they can be trihydric 
depending on the number of OH groups. So we learned one or two examples. This, you know, many of them, methanol, ethanol, CH3, OH, and C2H5, OH, they are all um, monohydric alcohol. Dihydric alcohols are those which have two OH groups. So CH2, OH, CH2, OH. This is ethylene glycol. This is a common name. It is ethylene glycol. I will talk about the nomenclature later. And uh, glycerol, just which I told you just now, this is that is a trihydric alcohol, CH2OH, CHOH, and CH2OH. This is a trihydric alcohol. So you based on the number of carbon OH groups, you could have monohydric, dihydric, or trihydric alcohols. Uh, then <clears throat> then to continue with the classification, we will classify now, look in more detail for monohydric alcohols. Okay. Now, monohydric alcohols are those which have one OH group. If they are saturated monohydric alcohols, that means there is, there is no double bond present in them. And monohydric can be of several types. So first type are those which are saturated. They will have the general formula CnH2n plus 2O. Okay. So let us look at the names of few of them. Common names also are important here. So I'm just going to do all. So if carbon is one, this will be, or let me make it, uh, express it in another way, CnH2n plus 1OH, because this is the functional group. So I can write it as CH3OH, right? What is the uh, IUPAC name of this one? Now please speak up all of you one by one. This is what? Methanol. Who will tell me the common name of this compound? Hmm? Anybody? None of you have switched on the cameras. I don't know who is there. Sanjay Hari Raghavan. Okay, tell me. Um, is it methyl hydroxide? Why? Methyl alcohol. Okay, it is called methyl alcohol. Methanol, you understand why? One carbon atom. Meth and or methanol. Now let the, sub, the second one, what will it be? C2H5OH, right? So ethanol. Would like ethanol, very good, ethanol. And ethanol will be called what? Common name is? Ethyl alcohol. Ethyl alcohol, ethyl alcohol or ethyl alcohol. Now let us take the next one, C3H7OH. Okay, this can be written in two ways. First one is CH3, CH2, CH2, OH. And the other one is on three carbon atoms, I put the OH on the middle carbon, right? So what will be the name of the first one? It uh, will be, uh, tell me. Propanol. Propanol, but you will have to show the position of OH group also. So what will it one be? One propanol. One propanol. And this will be obviously two propanol. Now you should learn the common names here. So the first one is propyl alcohol. Right? And here OH is on which carbon? This carbon is a secondary carbon. So I will call it secondary propyl alcohol. It can be called secondary propyl alcohol. Also, this one, if I write this one here, you can see CH3, CH, OH, and CH3. You can see there is a methyl branch on the second carbon atom. Okay. So on this, when you have, you can also call it isopropyl alcohol. Okay, isopropyl alcohol. Hmm? 
now let us take uh, the one the last one that is c4 h9 oh okay now how will we write possible structures of this alcohol let us practice that so there are four carbon atoms so let me write four carbon atoms so I can put OH anywhere I like. So where will I put OH? Let me first put on this carbon, OH. Now fill up the hydrogen, CH3, CH2, 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 OH. Now again, put four carbon atoms. Put OH on the second carbon here. Now fill up the hydrogen, CH3, CH2, CH2, not CH2, it will be CH. CH3. Okay. Now let us name, we let us write all possible structure. Now here, what will I do? So this is one, this is two. Next possibility is I take three carbon atoms in a chain and I put a branch here. Okay. Now how will I name? Now this, uh, where will I put OH? First, I'll put OH here. Then fill up the hydrogen. CH3, CH. CH2 and here CH3. And next again, I take three and a branch here and I put OH on the second carbon here. Now fill up the hydrogens. And you'll find all of them have the same formula. What is the formula? C4H9OH. Okay. Okay, now I want to name them. So let us name them. What will be the name of this one? Tell me. Hari, Hari, Hari Haran, tell me. What is the name? Uh, first one, ma'am. Uh, it is called oh. one butanol, ma'am. One butanol. Very good. Hari Raga, what is the name of the second one? Ma'am, is it 2-butanol? 2-butanol. 2-butanol. Very good. And uh, Sanjay, what is the name of the third one? Ma'am, again 2-butanol. What is it? It is 2, tell me. What should be the name? How many carbon atoms in the longest chain? One, two, and three, isn't it? Three. Yes, ma'am. Can you name it? So two propanol. Yeah, so it is propanol, but where is the OH on the first carbon atom? So what is it? Is yes. one? Propanol. One propanol. Then what about this methyl group? Where is it located? Two. So two methyl, one two propanol. Two methyl, one propanol, right? Very good. And uh, Sai Krishna, oh no, Sai, what is it? Sai Kalyan, what is the second? What is the fourth one? Miss two comma two. Miss two methyl. Two methyl, hmm. two methyl, uh, two methyl, two, two propanol, miss. Yeah. 2 methyl, 2 propanol. Did you understand? So this, this is the these are the common names. Now let us give them the IUPAC names. Um, no, I am so sorry. These are the IUPAC names. Now let us give them the common names. IUPAC are easy. They follow a set rule, right? 
in common names you have to understand that all of them are butyl alcohols because in common names what is important that four carbon atoms are taken together all have four carbon atoms so they are all butyl alcohols so before i give the common names i want you to tell me what type of alcohols they are so the first one that is a primary alcohol why is it a primary alcohol because oh is attached to the primary carbon why is it a primary carbon because it is attached to only one other carbon chain now here this one is which type of alcohol can you see hari haran there there are it is attached to two carbon chains so what type of alcohol is this this is a secondary alcohol now this third one this one becomes what type of alcohol tertiary alcohol and the uh, fourth one and what about the third one who will tell me what is the third alcohol is it primary secondary or tertiary secondary primary hmm. it is not primary. secondary it is primary alcohol the third one is also primary look at this carbon this carbon is attached to directly attached to only one other carbon atom so this is a primary alcohol right so this is a primary alcohol so how do you find primary alcohols their functional group will be not oh will be attached to ch2 so if it is ch2 oh it is primary alcohol if it is ch oh then it is secondary alcohol if it is coh then it is tertiary alcohol so you have to see carefully which is primary which is secondary which is tertiary okay now we will learn how to write their common names now for common names what is the trick one is you should know they are all butyl alcohols okay so in common names you give a name based on the total number of carbon atoms in iupac what did we do longest chain so longest chain has four so this became butanol here also four so it is butanol here there is three in the longest chain so this is uh, propanol here also three in the longest chain so it is also propanol but in common names what how will Uh, name it these are all butyl alcohol so this is also butyl alcohol this is also butyl alcohol right this is also butyl alcohol right and this is also butyl alcohol now obviously if i call all of them butyl alcohol how will i know which one is but one butanol which one is two so i have to give some uh, you know prefix to it so all of them how do you make it a prefix when there are when all the carbon atoms are in a straight chain then we call it n butyl alcohol right now when here oh is attached to secondary carbon so what will i call it secondary butyl alcohol now this one is tertiary so what will i call it i will call it tertiary butyl alcohol right and this one where there is a methyl branch on the second carbon atom what will i call it isobutyl alcohol okay so n is when all are in a chain secondary is when the functional group is on the secondary carbon and when it is uh, there is a methyl branch on the second carbon from carbon chain that is uh um then it is iso and when the functional group is on the tertiary carbon then it becomes tertiary butyl alcohol okay did you Ma understand uh ah. ma'am for the fourth one can we call it as like a uh, tertiary isobutyl alcohol no no not tertiary isobutyl it is tertiary because a uh, methyl group is connected to the second carbon ma'am ah uh, methyl group is connected to the second carbon right but you can't put two prefixes okay so when you are calling it tertiary then you have to leave out the iso part okay so we will not call it tertiary isobutyl you will call tertiary butyl alcohol isobutyl is this one 
okay okay ma'am yes yeah, so here also you can say uh, secondary isobutyl but we don't do that we just call it secondary here so in that case we leave out the iso part now supposing you have to write the uh, formula of uh, neopentyl alcohol so i want you to write down the formula of now there is one more prefix okay so we will now i will give you the names and we will write try to write the structures common names and write the structures so what did you understand n means straight chain okay n means straight chain and iso means mostly uh, methyl on second carbon and here remember the second carbon when we are counting we are counting from the left not from the functional group and uh, similarly there is one more prefix neo neo is when there is a meth two methyl two methyl groups on second carbon okay so this also applies to alkenes so supposing i have n pentane okay what will be the formula five carbon atoms in a straight chain this is n pentane supposing i say isopentane then what will happen the there is a branch on the second carbon this is isopentane and what is neopentane neopentane is two branches on the second carbon atom so this is neopentane okay so neo means two branches on the second iso one branch on the second and straight means n pentane now this does not work beyond pentane because that is why this was old system this is not the new system new system it is very easy and very logical there is no mistake there but here to some extent we learned that's why i am telling you few names which are asked commonly otherwise we only you can stick to iupsc system this is just a general uh, general knowledge for you in case you know because i came across a question which said write the structure of neopentyl alcohol now what is the other thing in uh, common names that total number of carbon atoms are taken so neopentyl means the alcohol contains five car carbon atoms and what else do you understand that there are two carbon atoms on two branches of methyl branches on the second carbon so neopentyl is this is and oh here this is neopentyl alcohol right so this is called what neopentyl alcohol okay so these are some common names you don't have to learn all of them so this was alcohols which are saturated which have the formula cn h2n plus 1 oh it is about those alcohols monohydrate now uh, let us take those alcohols which are uh, those alcohols where <clears throat> there is oh group but they are not saturated so first uh, second one second type of monohydric alcohols they are different types are there so one is they are called allylic alcohols which are allylic alcohols they are those monohydric al alcohols which have uh, oh group attached to the carbon atom which is adjacent to a double bond so say for example if i have ch2 double bond ch let me give you an example from your book and i need that C 
CH two CH CH two OH. Okay, so this is uh, this is called an allylic. This is common name is allylic alcohol. When is it an allylic alcohol? This is allylic alcohol, but it is what type of alcohol? It is primary. Al allylic alcohols uh, can be primary, secondary, or tertiary. So depending on where the OH is attached, how many carbon atoms are attached to this carbon. So this is generally the most common one is this one. What will be the IUPAC name of this one? Can anyone tell me? So it is prop 2N and 1 all. Did you understand why? Four car three carbon atoms, so prop. There's a double bond between second and third carbon atoms, so 2N. And OH is on the first carbon, so all. Numbering will always begin from that carbon, which is having the functional group. So you will not number it from the left, you will number it from the right to left, okay? So prop two in all. So this is an allylic alcohol. When is it an allylic alcohol? When OH is attached to a carbon atom, which is direct, <coughs> uh, which is uh, attached to another carbon atom involved in a double bond. So here, this carbon is directly attached to this carbon. Second carbon and third, they have a double bond. So it is called a allylic alcohol. Then you can have uh, uh, benzylic alcohol. Third one, benzylic alcohols. So those alcohols which contain a benzene ring. So if I have an alcohol here and there is a benzene ring, so OH is not attached directly to the benzene ring, but to the carbon chain attached to the benzene ring. Then what type of alcohol? This is a benzylic alcohol. Okay, so benzylic alcohol. <clears throat> so this one is called benzyl alcohol. Okay, now in all these al uh, alcohols, the three types of alcohols that we learned, in all these, where is the OH group attached? The OH group is attached to CH2. It is always CH2OH. It is saturated here. So in these alcohols, the OH group is attached to CH2 and this carbon to which the OH group is attached, it is sp3 hybridized. The hybridization is sp3. This helps in understanding the reactivity of alcohol. So I'm just mentioning the carbon is sp3 hybridized. Now the fourth type of alcohol. Fourth type of alcohol is, it is known as vinylic alcohol. Vinylic alcohol. Right? So, Example of vinylic alcohol is CH2, double bond CH and OH, right? So here OH is attached directly to which carbon? Which carbon is itself involved in the double bond, right? So it becomes vinylic alcohol, okay? So vinylic, in a vinylic alcohol, this carbon, since it is in, involved in the double bond formation, this carbon is sp2 hybridized. Right? And the fifth type, they are called phenols. They are not even called alcohols. There's a different class and that is phenols. And what are phenols? When OH is directly attached to the benzene ring. If OH is directly attached to the benzene ring, what do we call it? A phenol. Now there is not, this, this particular one is called phenol, right? There are others where you could have two OH groups. 
okay two oh groups one oh here and one oh here okay so this will be called ortho dihydroxy benzene ortho or i can call it one two dihydroxy that's also x so one there are different names iupac name which is uh, popular is benzene 1 to diol okay two oh groups so we call it benzene 1 to diol okay now uh, you could have any you know some common names you should learn like if you have a oh here and a ch3 here right then this type is called crisol and this one we call it orthocrisol orthocrisol so that is also uh, a well known compound orthocrisol if i put oh on the meta position then it will become metacrisol you could have a paracrisol so there are different types of um, um, phenols now one more i can tell you here you could have oh here and oh here so what will i call it 1 2 3 so 1 3 di um, i should write benzene first so benzene benzene 1 3 diol right but the common name of this compound is resorcinol this one i am telling you the common name because you are going to use this compound this is a solid that is available in the lab and you are going to use this compound to test for um, as a test that are you for making a reddish orange dye you make use of resorts and all so just at that time remember this is also a type of phenol okay so these are for the nomenclature for the time being this should be enough now let us go to methods of preparation okay so different ways of preparing alcohols now for preparing alcohols uh again as i have always told you you should start from the first so you can prepare from alkanes but very rarely so the first method of preparation is from alkenes okay from alkenes preparation of alcohols from alkenes now in your book textbook there are lot of in text questions for writing the iupac name and to identify whether it's a primary secondary or tertiary alcohol what type of alcohol it is all those questions i want you to do anyway when i do revision in the next class i am going to ask you all these things so please revise and keep okay now we uh, so we have to prepare alcohols from alkenes so supposing your alkene is ch2 double bond ch2 what is this alkene tell me sanjay what is the name of this alkene tell me do you know the name of this alkene two carbon atoms so what will we call it two carbon atoms are what sanjay eth right and alkene so it is ethene so from ethene i want to make an alcohol how which alcohol i want to make an alcohol with two carbon atoms so what is that ch3 ch2 oh okay now from a unsaturated compound i am making a saturated compound that means i am adding something so what should i add to ethene to make it ch3 ch2 oh can you tell me anybody hari raga can you tell me what should i add to ethene to make it ethanol 
हम्म हम इसे डेने होच if i add any oh then what will happen will it be addition reaction and if i if it is addition na will come here and oh will come here i don't want na there ma'am ma'am uh, aqueous koh is it h2o ma'am water ma'am yes it is h2o it is you have to add aqueous koh also uh, vaishnavi we cannot add because K in potassium, how will we get it? We can just simply add water, right? And water does not ionize easily, so you add a little bit of acid, so that water breaks into H plus and OH minus. So H plus will attach on one carbon, and OH will attach on the other carbon. What will you get? Ethanol. Okay. So whatever is the number of carbon atoms, wherever the double bond is, H will attach on one and OH will attach on the other. This reaction is known as hydration. Hydration means addition of water. So hydration of alkenes. Okay. What type of reaction it is? It is an addition reaction. Addition of water. Addition of water. in presence of h plus okay so whenever you have to make an alcohol you choose a suitable alkene the alkene structure the way the carbon atoms are arranged will not change you have to just put the h and oh on the double bond so let us take an example so supposing we have ch3 CH two OH oh, no sorry CH two right now I want to add to it water right H plus and OH minus so I will add H plus here so uh, what product will I get Sai Kalyan can you tell me what is the product that I will get Anyone? Am is it CH three, CH two, CH two OH? Let us see. So Vaishnavi says that H will go here and OH will go here. So you will get CH three, CH two, CH two OH. Right? Does anyone else have any other opinion? Hmm. Anybody, please tell me. Now CH three, CH OH, then uh, CH three. Very, yes. So CH three, CH OH, and then CH three. Who gave me this answer? Hari Haran. Hari Haran. Okay. So Hari Haran says it is. Two propanol and Vaishnavi says it is one propanol. Now, which is the correct answer? Let's. I'll make Sai Kalyan the judge. Sai Kalyan, tell me which is the correct answer. What do you think is the correct answer? Two the possibilities are. Huh? Second one, miss. The second one is the correct one. So two propanol is the correct one. Okay. So Sai Kalyan has given his judgment. Two propanol is the correct Hello. one. Right. Now, why is it the correct one? Tell me. Can you give the reason? Miss, uh, addition reaction uh, for a uh, non-symmetrical alkene, miss, odd number of yeah. uh, carbon atoms. Yeah. So it happens according to Markovnikov's rule. So according yes. to Markovnikov's rule, uh, one propanol yes. will be doubled. Right. So it follows the Markovnikov's rule. So what is the Markovnikov's rules when? Uh, Unsymmetrical reagent attaches to a unsymmetrical alkene, then the negative part of the reagent goes to that carbon which has less number of hydrogen atoms. So it is not this way. The addition will take place in another way. That means OH will go to the middle carbon, and H will go to the this carbon. So this is going to be the 
major product. So sometimes when you look at addition, you have to carefully see the addition reaction should be in such a way that uh, if the alkene is unsymmetrical, then negative part of the reagent should go to that carbon, which has less number. So you have to follow which anti-Marconi-Cobbs rule. Okay, NKV rule. Now, uh, I'll give one more example and all of you tell me the correct answer. So this time I will take this alkene. Double bond CH2, right? And now I want to add HOH. What will be my major product? Tell me the name of the product. Isopropyl alcohol. Who said that? Hariharan. Hariharan, isopropyl alcohol. What is isopropyl alcohol? See, this is carbon one, this is two, this is three. Can you tell me where the OH will come? Will the OH come on the first or the second carbon atom? Second. Second. So if it comes on the second carbon atom, what is the CSC. alcohol? Yeah, so this is tertiary butyl alcohol, right? Not isobutyl, tertiary butyl, right? So uh, the OH will come on the middle carbon. Why? Because this has less number of hydrogen atoms. So if I follow the Markovnikov's rule, then this is the way addition will take place. So whatever your alkene is, you can find out and that uh, alkene will give the... Um, yes. Yes. Uh, if, a, if a if question is asked, for example, for eating, butene, like that it's asked means, then uh, one propanol one propanol might come, like uh, the other will come on this, the opposite will happen. No, everywhere, actually, uh, Sai Kalyan, everywhere there will be a major product and a minor product. But we don't write the minor product. We always write the major product. Now, <clears throat> supposing you have, your question is, supposing I have CH, this one butene, right? Or I have two butene. Right? Now I add water to them. H2. I add water. What will I get in the first case and what will I get in the second case? Will I get the same product or will I get different? Let us see. So when I add H2O here, H2O means H plus OH minus. So where will OH go? This is 1, this is 2, this is 3, this is 4. And this is one, this is two, this is three, this is four, let us call it. So where will the OH go? This OH one first will... one to do it attached to CH on this. Huh. So in the first one, it will attach to CH. So CH3, CH2, CH, OH, and CH3. So what will you get? Two propanol, uh, two butanol. All right. Here, where will it attach? Both have the... There are two carbon atoms which have less number of hydrogen atoms. So it can attach anywhere. This is a symmetrical alkene, so you don't have to bother. So you can write H anywhere and OH anywhere. So if, even if I write a, H, so here also if I put it on this carbon atom, right? This is two butanol. And if I write it otherwise, CH, I put OH here and CH2, CH3. This is also 2-butanol. So here there is no need for any Markovnikov's rule. Because why? Because the alkene is symmetrical alkene. It is a symmetrical alkene means both carbon atoms have same number of hydrogen atoms. So in that case, you can put H anywhere, OH anywhere. But yes. if it uh, is unsymmetrical. Then, then yeah. that means for uh, symmetrical alkenes, there won't be a minor product. There will be no minor product. Symmetrical alkenes, there will be no minor product. Okay. Now let us take
<clears throat> now supposing i want to make a primary alcohol hmm? so from a unsymmetrical alkene supposing i want to make like for propene i want to make one propanol how will i make them okay so if i want to make from propene two propanol it is easy but if the question is i want you how will you make one propanol from propene can you do it you can by whatever you have learned till now you can do it how will you do first you add hbr in presence of peroxides right so what will you get ch3 ch2 ch2 br anti marconicos okay so you will get br here and from here how can i get this one by aqueous koh so from alkyl halides you know you can make one bromopropane and from one bromopropane with aqueous koh you can get one propanol that is possible but there is a method by which you can directly prepare primary alcohols from uh, pro, uh, unsymmet uh, from unsymmetrical alkenes instead of secondary you make primary so this is the second method the b part of from alkenes so from alkenes this is by earlier one was by uh, hydration of alkenes this is by um hydroboration hydroboration oxidation reaction oxidation of alkenes okay hydroboration oxidation of alkenes okay of alkenes so how we, do we do this so here we make use of a compound which is called borane okay earlier we had in our syllabus in 11th standard we had largely s block elements now we don't do s block and p block they have been completely removed from the syllabus anyway good for you you don't have there's lot of chemistry there so fortunately that is not there now but this borane is a compound of boron plus hydrogen what is the valency of boron boron is in group 13 so the valency has to be 3 so borane is bh3 now there is a little problem in all compounds of borane what is the problem in all compounds of borane they uh, they actually exist as uh, it, it is a little unstable compound it stabilizes where Two BH three combine with each other and form B two H six. That's why this is called diborane. Okay, so it exists as diborane, but the reaction is only with one, that is borane. Okay, now this borane, if I show you the structure of borane, it is this is BH three. right now boron has uh, if i draw the exact structure then boron has three electrons in its outermost shell and this is the electron of hydrogen right now this hydrogen completes it its octet uh, duplet by but what about boron boron has only six right it has what you call incomplete octet okay in 11th standard you might have learned that this bh3 it acts like what it acts like lewis acid it easily accepts a pair of electrons wherever it can get so because of this this bh3 reacts with uh, e, uh with an alkene so the alkene that i choose here is ch3 ch double bond ch2 that is propene now when propene reacts with bh3 it acts like this you know this h attaches to one carbon atom and b attaches to the other carbon atom 
okay so it becomes ch3 ch and here ch2 bh2 right basically what happens is the bh3 comes and sits here i will explain this in a little detail so that you understand it better so this is double bond here and bh3 comes and attaches here sits here this is b sorry so this is b h3 why is bh3 attracted here it is attracted here because it has <clears throat> two it is short of two electrons and it can see the two x electrons here on the double bond there is area is rich in electrons so what it does it, it comes there and it sits on the top so what happens it attaches here and here so the double bond opens up and you get this compound okay then the reaction continues another molecule of propene now comes in ch double bond ch2 and uh, right now this again uh, now two molecules attach so ch ch2 hold twice no ch2 ch2 hold twice bh and then again all the hydrogens are displaced so ch3 ch2 ch2 hold thrice b okay so one by one what is happening it appears as if you can see i will write this part once again in a easy way so what is happening ch3 ch double bond ch2 you write on the arrow first bh3 now what happens one hydrogen of bh3 is replaced by this so what do you get ch3 ch2 ch2 hold twice bh2 and then that becomes ch3 ch again bh3 uh, again propene here let me show you this is a mistake first it is only one one hydrogen is displaced ch2 bh2 then one more molecule of propene so it becomes ch2 hold twice bh and then again propene ch3 ch double bond ch2 then three molecules displace three propyl groups displace and it becomes tripropyl borane whole thrice okay now when it is like this at that time you hydrolyze it in alkaline medium so you use h2o2 and from h2o2 what hydrolyzes it oh so what do you get you h2o2 breaks up you the structure of h2o2 is like this so you can write here ch3 ch2 ch2 oh three times plus h3bo3 okay so this is boric acid now the side products and intermediate products in this reaction are not required so how do you write the reaction in the exam you don't have to write all this you can write the exam by writing the reactants on the arrow so how will you write it in the exam ch3 ch double bond ch2 plus h2o but this time on the arrow you write bh3 and here oh minus and h2 h2o i have already written so oh minus will give you ch3 ch2 ch2 oh okay so you get one propanol here so this is a method by which 
hydroboration oxidation gives you primary alcohols and simple uh, alco uh, simple uh, hydration of alkenes that gives you secondary alcohols so mostly the alcohols that you get in the first case are secondary except of course when it is ethene and in all other cases if you want a primary alcohols you have to do use bh3 and oh minus you can write it as bh3 or you can also write it as b2h6 and sometimes in the book it is written or b2h6 so this reaction is called hydroboration oxidation here the product is like anti markovnikov's group so depending on uh, what is your reactant you can get um, anti markovnikov or markovnikov product so that is how you prepare it from alkenes okay now the next method is which you know second method it is from alkyl halides this one you have just finished alkyl halides so you know how will you prepare it from alkyl halides rx plus aqueous koh here it is a substitution reaction roh plus kx okay so aqueous koh or aqueous NaOH. So if I take CH3, CH2, Cl, then with aqueous KOH, Cl will be replaced by OH. So I'll get CH3, CH2, OH plus KCl. Okay. So when I have to just simply replace OH with uh, Cl with OH, I use which reagent? Aqueous KOH. So this is a very easy method. This is from alkyl halides. Now comes a very, very important method that is from after alkyl halides, what do you need to learn? From aldehydes and ketones. From aldehydes and ketones. Now please understand what are aldehydes and ketones. Aldehydes and ketones together, they are known as carbonyl compounds carbonyl compounds what are carbonyl compounds who oh, oh my god so many people have left sanjay is not there and uh, hari raghav has also left okay so uh, aldehydes and ketones they together are called carbonyl compounds. So what are carbonyl compounds? They are compounds which have this group, C double bond O group. In them, they are known as carbonyl compounds. So which carbonyl compounds are aldehydes? If on this C double bond O group, there is one H, at least one H, or if they are both H, then these are called aldehydes. And on this C double bond O group, if there is both carbon chains, like if there is a CH3 here and a CH3 here, then it becomes a ketone. So if at least one of them is H, then it is aldehyde. If uh, both of them are H, then it is aldehyde. But if both of them are carbon chains, then they are they become ketones. So both aldehydes and ketones will contain this group, C double bond O. So supposing I have a simple aldehyde, supposing I have C double bond O and I have this aldehyde, there is H here and H here. This aldehyde is called methanal or also commonly known as formaldehyde. Now I want to change it into an alcohol. How will I change it into an alcohol? CH, CH. Now if I add one OH here and one OH here, right? What did I do? Addition reaction. I fitted one OH on this carbon here. One OH I added here and one on the oxygen. So what alcohol did it become now? CH3OH. 
So it has become what? Methanol or methyl alcohol. Right? Now, how can I add hydrogen? Now, this is an addition reaction. I have to add hydrogen. There are very good hydrogenating agents, very good reagents, which will help in addition of hydrogen. We can use hydrogen gas also, but that requires a lot of catalyst and the reagent here should be in a gaseous state, then hydrogen works. But otherwise, a very good reducing agent is NaBH4. So NaBH4 is a very good reducing agent. It is called sodium borohydride. It is known as sodium borohydride. Now sodium borohydride um, can reduce aldehydes and ketones. Both of them, it reduces them to alcohols. Okay, so that is a method for preparation of alcohols. Now let us take one more example. Now the example that I want to take is, this time I put a CH3 here, and H here, and double bond O. And by using my same reducing agent, NaBH4, what does it do? This is C, CH3 here, there is H, this is the skeleton which is already there. Now what am I adding? I am going to add a hydrogen here and a hydrogen here. Now write it in a straight line. How will I write it in a straight line? What has it become now? CH3, CH2, OH. Right, so what is this alcohol? Ethyl alcohol or commonly known as ethanol. Um, IUPAC name is ethanol. What is this aldehyde? It is ethanol. All right, so by adding a double bond, um, adding hydrogen to the double bond with the help of NaBH4, I can get alcohols. Now you saw in the first case and the second case, we got what type of alcohols? We got both cases, we got primary alcohols. So what do you understand? That aldehydes on reduction, okay, on reduction with the help of what? NaBH4, okay, they give you primary alcohols. Okay, if I take ketones, now this time on C double bond O, I will put both carbon chain. It has become a ketone. And now I bring about a reduction with NaBH4. And with the help of NaBH4, now I will put the same carbon skeleton, CH3, C, CH3, and O that is always there. But instead of double bond, I'll put two hydrogens here. One hydrogen here and one hydrogen here. And if I write in a straight line, which alcohol did I make? CH3, CH, OH, and then CH3. It is two propanol. Right? So what do I understand? The second thing from here. Ketones on reduction with sodium borohydride. They will give me secondary alcohols. Okay, did you understand this reaction, this method? So by reduction of aldehydes and ketones, we can get alcohols. The alcohols will have the same number of carbon atoms as the aldehyde and ketone, but Aldehydes on reduction give primary alcohols and ketones on reduction give secondary alcohol. Now let me give you one or two examples and tell me which alcohol will you get. Now this time I have this aldehyde, CH3, CH2, CHO. 
okay and i want to reduce it with na bh4 which al which uh, alcohol will i get can you tell me this is propanal which alcohol will i get anybody propanol ma'am yes you will get propanol which propanol one propanol or two propanol one propanol miss propanol one propanol one propanol right very good one propanol supposing i have ch3 c double bond o ch2 ch3 right this is my ketone which is 2 butanone now i will reduce it again with na bh4 on the arrow you can write 2h right 2h so what will i get tell me which alcohol will i get who will tell me vaishnavi you are very quiet tell me what will i get one minute please योर आंसर इज करेक्ट बट योर नेम इज नॉट राइट वॉट इज द नेम ऑफ दिस कंपाउंड Um, two butanol. Two butanol. Two butanol. It is two butanol. Did you understand, Vaishnavi? Yes, ma'am. So when I take a ketone, what will I get? I will get secondary alcohol. Okay. So if I want to make primary alcohol, I should take aldehyde with the same number of carbon atom. And if I take uh, that if i want to make secondary alcohol then i should take a ketone with the same number of carbon atoms all right so that is a method for preparation of alcohols from aldehydes and ketones by which method this method is called reduction right and what is the reducing agent that we are using nabh4 sodium borohydride this is a specialist right specialist when you have you know in when you go to a doctor sometimes you want to go to a doctor who specializes in the problem that you have so if you go if you have uh, some difficulty in seeing and you want to check your eyesight you go to a ophthalmologist because he specializes in eye treatment you can't go to a general physician so similarly nabh4 it is he, it is a specialist specialist what is the specialization of nabh4 it can reduce aldehydes and ketone nothing else it reduces only aldehydes and ketones into alcohols with what is important is with same number of carbon atoms this word same is important here with same number of carbon atoms okay so you can prepare it from there now we will take one more the second method from aldehydes or ketones from aldehydes plus ketones okay so the second method now this is i should say a 10 star reaction 10 star means very very important in every exam this question comes without exception if you look up the previous year's question paper you will realize 
this particular reaction is repeated every year. The reactants change, but the reaction remains the same. Now, what is this reaction? This is a reaction in which these same compounds, which are carbonyl compounds, or what is the functional group in carbonyl compounds? C double bond O. They react with what you call Grignard reagent. We have done in aldehydes and ketones a Grignard reagent. What is a Grignard reagent? Who will tell me? Sai Kalyan, you have done this in school. So tell me, what is a Grignard reagent? Hmm? Are you there? Yeah. What is it? R and um, organometallic oxide. Yes, organometallic compounds. And how do I represent? You represent it with R, M, G, X. R is a carbon chain, magnesium, and X. R, M, G, X. If R troubles you, then let me make it CH3 for making it easy. And if X troubles you, then let me make it BR or make it CL. So you learned that when you have um, methyl chloride and you add magnesium to it, then you get methyl magnesium chloride. This is an organometallic compound. What is the speciality of this compound? In this compound, the carbon is directly attached to a metal. And when carbon is attached to a metal, what happens to this uh, carbon? Metal is always positive. And Carbon is more electronegative, so this will get a negative charge. So if this bond breaks, then magnesium will get a positive charge and carbon will get a negative charge. Now on this carbonyl group, what do you see? On this carbonyl group, car oxygen will get a negative charge and carbon will get a positive charge. All right? Now, to make it a little clearer, I want to write this with red. CH3, Mg, and Cl. Now, where will the uh, red go and uh, where will the positive go and where will the negative go? You can see CH3 will go to this carbon because this is negative and this is positive. And where will magnesium go? It will go to oxygen. Okay. So if I write the addition product, how will I write? First, I will write C and O. Right. And on carbon, what will I add? I will add CH3. So on carbon, I will add here CH3. Where did the CH3 come? From the Grignard rate. And on oxygen, what will I add? MgCl. Right? This is an intermediate compound that will be formed. Okay? Now, this is not stable. This compound will not last. So what will happen? Water will come for rescue. Water is H plus and OH minus. Here, what is there? Oxygen is minus and Mg is plus. So you can see H will go and attach here. Oxygen will go and attach here and this bond will break. So what will I get? I will get C here, OH. And the CH3 is here. Right? And uh, MgCl2 will go there. So in MgCl and this is OH. Now this is an inorganic compound. Let us forget about it for the time being. It is a salt which you get instead of magnesium chloride. It is hydroxy magnesium chloride. But you can see very importantly that you have got this compound which in on carbon, there is an OH attached. This is an alcohol. Now I can make a particular alcohol. Now let us use this equation in making the alcohols that we want. Okay. So for doing that, I'll copy this reaction to the next page and I will put some. Okay. So let me copy.
I hope the whole thing goes easily. Control C, Control M, Control V. Okay, so I got my same reaction here. So that it is a little more clear, I will make all this red. CH3. Okay, now how am I going to change this reaction? So for changing this reaction, I will put something here. I did not put here anything. So I will put H here. H here and H here. Right? So in this compound also, there will be H here and H here. And this compound also, there will be H here and H here. All right? So what is this compound that I have got? This compound is CH3, CH2, OH. So this compound is what? Ethanol. So how did I get ethanol? I got it from this compound here. What is this compound? CH2 double bond O plus CH3 MgCl. What did it give me? CH3, CH2, OH. So what did I do here? I added a CH3 from here. And on oxygen, I added, I will write HOH here. If I want to get rid of this part also, addition, I can directly write here. Okay. So what do I get? CH3, CH2, OH. Now let me do it once again. In the next slide, again, I will put, put my the same reaction. And this time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this. Instead of CH3, I'm going to write C2H5MgCl. And here, I'm going to put the same thing, H and H. So here also, H and H. What will I have to change here? I will have to change only my R. So this is C2H5. This will also become C2H5. So if I want to write in a straight line, what alcohol did I got? Did I get? The alcohol that I got is CH3. CH, this is C2H5 is what? CH2, CH3. So CH3, CH2, CH2, OH. All right, instead of writing C2H5, I broke it up and I wrote it as CH3CH2. Now, what, what? how did I make this? I made it from CH2 double bond O plus CH3CH2 MgCl. So I don't bother about this. This came and attached here and one hydrogen came and attached on oxygen. I got this. Okay, now if you have understood this, then I will get rid of this whole reaction and I will, we will practice now. Now, what did we do first? CH2 double bond O for maldehyde plus CH3 MgCl. MgBr also doesn't matter. On the arrow H2O, what will I get? This will come here to help me. So it will become CH3 CH2 OH. If I take CH2 double bond O plus CH3 CH2 MgBr and H2O, what will I get? This CH2 CH3 will come here. So what will I get? CH3 CH2 CH2 OH. If I take CH2 double bond O plus I take CH3 CH, CH3, Mg, Br, right? What will happen? This whole thing will come here. So what will I get? H2O. So I'll get CH3, CH, CH3, and here CH2, OH. Now in all these alcohols that I prepared, what is the, what is the thing that is common? Can you make out what is the thing that is common? 
all are primary alcohols can you make out all are primary alcohols so what is the rule that i can make i can say that if my aldehyde is formaldehyde okay so methanol plus grignard reagent always will give me primary alcohol okay so all of them have this group ch2oh here also ch2oh here also ch2oh so this part comes from formaldehyde and this part here it comes from where it comes from the grignard reagent okay so if you know the alcohol you can decide which grignard reagent will give me this alcohol provided it is a primary alcohol now in the next class we will learn how to prepare secondary and tertiary i request you please go and read so that you understand this very well okay so only hari haran has opened his camera i don't know what about others vaishnavi switch on the camera at least for few minutes so that i can say a hi to all of you sai kalyan you also please open your camera hi very good so in the uh, in uh, next week when i meet your parents what should i tell them tell me hmm should i say that you don't switch on your camera is there a problem hmm anyway so please read and uh, uh, be prepared anyway i hope your parents know that i will be meeting them not in person only online okay so you are going to your center to meet other teachers is it that time the only teacher teaching online otherwise all others are offline physics is offline or online um uh, they are provided both offline and online mode now if you are not able to attend or attend offline you can attend online okay and uh, for uh, mathematics i am it's the same same so chemistry only you have no option you you can only be online you can't have be offline maybe some day i'll come to chennai and take a class but otherwise okay nice meeting you okay bye all of thank you, you. take care thank bye you. bye and thank you bye